This is my case caddis pattern. I was going to leave this to later on in the year, but my friend uh, Peter Hutchison has been absolutely hammering the grayling in the Scottish waters with it recently. Uh, it's seven the other day there, and every one of them took this fly. Um, this is his preferred option. It's very varied, and I can show you the options in a bit. So I'll just zoom in a bit further. It's better. I'll go on with the tying. This is a size 14. Hook and device is a Fasner 120 clink hook. Nice shape. Good wire on it. It's a nice strong hook. And also I've added a, on the, the 14 I put a 3mm uh, get slotted. Uh, Ian Gillard that get slotted. I get these off. These are copper beads. Uh, that's a 3mm. On the 16 I put a 2.5mm. Um, you can do them in gold and black. I prefer black bead uh, during the summer uh, for the trout. You can put any rib you want on, uh, sorry, flashback on it. It's a good way, this method is a great way of adding a different colour to the nymph skin and just you could use this method for many other patterns. So for the flashback we're using Unimylar. This is the middle size 14. I find the 12's too big for this size of fly. Yeah, I use the 16 as a rib on my grayling slayer. Um, but you could vary this red, black, pheasant tail. But you, the important thing here is to make sure that you get eventually you can tie it on further up the hook and then but as you get closer towards the back you need to make sure that the mylar is sitting right in the center wait i'll try and show you you want it you want to pull it straight out from the hook so that it's exactly centered so that when you bring it over it's going right up the center and there's no twists in it so bring the mylar quite well around the hook I used to struggle with these patterns because in I'm going to say the olden days, but it was wasn't the really olden days. They used nylon, and since I started using this nano silk, you can use this for the rib, and it means you've got a lot. It's much more versatile than nylon. Um, so what you do is you just put that same as the garden fly. You just put that. That's going to be your rib. So you just put that thread to the back. And then you need to tie in another thread. I've also just recently there changed, um, I was on to Semperfly about other threads and I've actually started using, I had been using 12 but I'm now down to using 18 I think just because I'm just getting used to tying on smaller flies. The 18 is absolutely fantastic. I'm actually starting to find the 12s a bit thick now. It's a good one to cover. It's easier to cover up the, the hook. The more you cover up the hook, it doesn't really matter. It's just a personal choice. But the the whiter the hook is, the the more translucent the numb skin gets. And you can also uh, rub it with pearl mylar on the hook, and that makes it really shiny. Now the prep preps are normal for the numb skin, so you just want to cut your 45 degree angle spin your uh, thread towards you which tightens the thread up it's easier to catch the numb skin in if you do that just get grab the point just one couple of right tight turns and then bring that back down to where your mile at starch and then bring the thread up out the road I have the hook and the, the, as I say the nano silk is so strong I can push and pull the not push pull the hook up and down at will almost I'm having to work around the camera here so right as normal first turn pull it tight Finger and top stops it springing out. Second turn 
still quite tight and then by the time you get to your third turn you've used up your 45 degree angle and you're now into the full width of the numskin and then from that you just half over half which gives you your nice segments loosen right off now and then you'll the profile of the body will get much thicker as you go up round the hoop you can also if you want if, especially if you're maybe doing 12s or 10s you might want to build the shape of the body up slightly underneath but you don't need it on the smaller patterns especially 16s now so it doesn't spring out I'll tighten it again now the secret to getting it is pull the last turn pull it down to the side thread under one two three and I use the weight of the bobbin I can actually let that go and it's not going anywhere if you just keep your if your vice is high enough up you can use the weight of the bobbin for nearly everything that you do and then to get a nice neat finish pull your numb skin really really tightly get your scissors push the bead up snip it off and it's as neat a finish as you could actually just finish it like that without it covering it up at all just give it a couple of wraps just to make sure now the mistake I often make is cutting the thread off here but what you actually want to do with this thread is bring your mylar rib now if you keep the rib slightly towards you because just naturally when you're rubbing it up it will pull it away from you so if anything have it airing on your side see how that's just slightly off centre and we'll see how that goes when we rub it up another wee tip when you're doing these things is don't cut your mylar off right in at the head just now give yourself I know you're wasting a wee bit but if it if for any reason it comes out the thread you've got a chance of because uh, that's tied up underneath everything and you've got a chance that you could rescue the fly because you've left that wee tag if for any reason it had to fall out I see some people tying them and they tie them right in here and then all of a sudden it springs out when you're when you're rubbing it or whatever so what we want to do now is what finish I'm trying one of these C and F whip finish tools and it's really it's really nice it's got lovely fine points uh, it's also got a magnet which is great for me for picking up small hooks um, on the end so you, you could actually do that with some of your own tools just by uh, sticking a magnet on the end of them it's absolutely it's a great thing such a simple idea scalpel thread off now bring your other thread again if you angle it and twist the thread towards you that tightens the thread up you don't want a flat thread to do the rib and then what you do is is that you just follow your the segmentation of the numb skin just follow up Just start your get into the first segment and then just follow that up. Take your time. Now what you want to do is bring it over, then tighten. Don't tighten it right from the start or you'll pull the mylar right out of line. And you can see that's pulled it right into the middle gives you a lovely effect now you can cut off your tag that we're all nice and secure now from this point as I say you could do that with pheasant tail eh, any kind of even a coloured thread or even another if you can't cut a thin strip of like brown or just a maybe a golden eh, numbskin you can tie that in exactly the same from here you can get as plain or as you could just put squirrel on this or you could really leave it as almost like this but you could just put a collar a dubbing or something like that on for the less experienced tyres 
I just finish them off simply with a bit of partridge and then a bit of squirrel. I just, um, I, my knowledge of feathers wasn't great and um, I asked a couple of guys on Facebook and they all put me on to Steve Cooper at Cook's Hills and I must admit the guy was, spoke to him on the phone for quite a bit and he was very, very helpful. His knowledge of feathers is unbelievable and the stuff he sent me up was absolutely gorgeous. So what I did um, before I'd bought a full partridge skin but uh, Steve recommended a neck because of the size of the hooks that I tie with because uh, he said the feathers would be much more useful and I must admit looking at it, looking at it I think I'll be able to use every feather on the thing. So what you do is get your feather, strip all the fluff off it, take away the, because it's quite a, take away the bigger bigger feathers strip what you need maybe six or seven each side nap the point out then bring them forward to get your V like that Set them on top. I always admire David McPhail. I've learnt all my time off David McPhail videos and Davy's an absolute master at making this look as simple as you can possibly get it. And I find it anything but. Sorry, I just forgot one thing. A new thing I'm doing. I've got a friend over in Italy, Marco Rossi, and he's been showing me some pictures of the flies that I tied and then he's been tying them and I must admit he does a brilliant job in them. So a wee tip he had was to put some dubbing, very little, this is squirrel, it's very hard to dub but I like the effect that it has. It's just pure squirrel, there's no hardly any under fur, it's not like hair's ear or whatever that's very easy to dub on, so you need to persevere with that. But if you just put on a... See what that does is that, that takes up the space that the, uh, the, the virtual nymph skin's left when you've been putting the head on, uh, tying the head in. Get your partridge down either side, a couple of loose turns, Fold it all back, two loose turns, square up your the top, pull it back to your preferred length, and then tighten it in. And then cut off the excess. Fold it all back. As I say, it's just personal preference here what you do but the nano silk you can really bind that down and then just my favourite finish very little here mind you is just a bit of dubbing wax on your thread just maybe do three or four centimetres max get your clump of squirrel just touch it on not a lot Any kind of bigger chunks, just take them off, wind your thread in, One, two, and then basically you're almost just doing your whip finish, winding that in all the time, keeping your thread going forward and behind the head. This is when you can put your solar eyes or your varnish. I don't bother on these ones because it's getting tucked in behind the bead. Whip finish. One, two, three, off, up. Hold your bead, pull it tight, and that locks everything in. Thread off. That'll flatten off in the, the partridge is sitting up a wee bit, but that'll flatten off in the water. And that's your flashback caddis. <laughs>